put together a couple different models, multiple linear regression models using Excel, and I've gone ahead and uh, updated these and given them names Model 1, Model 2A when we had all four of the regions, and then I uh, labeled this one Model 2B once we fixed everything and just kept the three region booleans that we needed. So we've got two basic models that we've got here. And I have added these uh, model values up here and then took the uh, MAE, RMSE, and R squared information so we can start keeping track of the models as we work our way through. All right, so let's uh, continue on and see what we can do to uh, review the distributions uh, of the various attributes. Okay, so we've got children, and we can see that is definitely right skewed. We've got a bulk uh, with zero, one, small number of uh, children, and then uh, way fewer with a large number of children. Uh, and you can see it is peaking here in the uh, five range. Body mass index, BMI, seems to be distributed reasonably normally. It looks like it has a bit of a right tail there, so uh, we can see that visually. Of course, we can always check the descriptives to make sure age. We've got a fairly even distribution throughout with a little tail on the right and a bit of a mass on the left uh, at the lower numbers, the lower ages. And then, of course, we've got charges, which uh, certainly seems to have uh, some issues there. So we can then review the actual descriptive statistics for these. I'll go ahead and do that over here to the right of everything else. So let me go to data, the data analysis tool pack. And I'll create descriptives for all of my numeric attributes. So we'll start over here, go over to my very first Boolean field, all the way over to charges, labels, output range. Let's put that over here where we just were a minute ago. So that is AL11. Click OK. And then I'll move all these over one and then clean up. I don't need the repeat row headers. So I'll get rid of those. And here we can see our values for the various attributes, the descriptives. I did not do interquartiles for these, so that would be something you might want to add because we do have a fairly clean data set, 1,338 values. So you could divide that by four. and grab your 335th val or 34th value from the top and bottom to calculate your quartiles. All right, so we've got, uh, let's see, kurtosis. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and uh, you probably saw that in the write-up. Let's see if we can find that. Here we have our discussion on normality, linearity, homoscedasticity. And two of the key things that we'll look for are the skewness and the kurtosis. So one thing that uh, is worth reviewing is this paragraph on kurtosis because Excel, when it gives you your descriptives, or even if you just calculate kurtosis all by itself, 
cal gives you uh, what we call excess kurtosis. So that means that what Excel is giving you is the actual kurtosis score minus three. And that's pretty common with statistical tools that they uh, report excess kurtosis versus kurtosis. So the actual kurtosis score in this case of sex bullion is add three, so minus two, minus one, you know, 0.998-ish or so, something like that would be the kurtosis score. Same thing with smoker. Smoker's actual kurtosis score is 3.14. So the idea is we can transform these variables to help address kurtosis and skewness. So how can we do that? Well, let's take a look at our scores here. So skewness of smoker boolean, all of these boolean fields, we're not really going to be able to do much because we only have two possible data values. So there's nothing we can do with these. We just have one or the other, and it's distributed that way. But we can take a look at children age and BMI. Now note, we see probably the one variable we have the most problem with is charges. We've got kurtosis, 1.6, excess kurtosis, which means our actual kurtosis is 4.6, and skewness of 1.5. Now, depending on who you're talking to, a lot of uh, researchers will say, you know, kurtosis for social science uh, can, you know, maybe go all the way, all the way up even to uh, 10, and even uh, skewness up to two or three, because in social science, uh, human behavior just doesn't really tend to fit a normal distribution as much as we'd like it to. So that is something to consider, and also the fact that we're dealing uh, with solving business problems more so than making sure our data uh, theoretically matches our model's underlying assumptions. So all that said, we can still review the normality scores and address them if we'd like. So let's take a look at children, age, BMI. So age seems to have the biggest kurtosis problem. Children seems to have the biggest skewness problem. So skewness uh, is close to one still within what we would probably feel comfortable with even as a, uh, a theoretical researcher. Uh, kurtosis age, probably okay the way it is, but if we wanted to try and address those, we could. So we would say, let's take age, uh, and instead of just plain age, let's um, create a new attribute, and we'll call it Let's see, age was right skewed. So we'll take the square root of that. All right. So if I were to take the square root of age and then bring that all the way down, and now I'll just add the descriptives for my new square root of age over to the right of everything else I've already got here. So let's do descriptives. For my new data field, let's see, we only have the one that we're looking at. So let's go ahead and put that in over here. We'll put it right to the right, click OK, and I can get rid of the row titles again. Okay, so what did we do? We uh, The kurtosis for age has come down a little tiny bit, all right, and the skewness has come down uh, and actually is uh, skewed uh, slightly the other way now. And then we can do the same thing with, say, children. Okay, children. So you can see 
some of our transformations are better at skewness. Um, maybe the natural log might be better at uh, dealing with kurtosis. So now let's do a new feature. And this will be the square root. Let's do the ln. So ln of children. So ln is generally one of the more powerful techniques. Actually, let's just do the square root again. All right, so now we'll do another round of descriptives with our new square root children. Put the output range just to the right of what we've done before again. And see what we've got. All right, so we go to our, yeah, so the skewness is almost gone now from uh, children. Kurtosis, on the other hand, has gone up, uh, well, um, gone down a little bit uh, more negative. So excess kurtosis has gone down. The actual kurtosis score there would be, what, one and a half or so. All right, so we can use these as ways to, address our normal distribution violations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two new columns and I'm going to move age over here and children over here and I'm just cutting and pasting so control X and then insert cut cells. All right, so now I can create a new regression model with my Boolean fields here, the square root of age, square root of child, and BMI to predict my charges. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we end up with. I'll go to solver. No, I won't. I'll go to data analysis. And I'll click on regression, say OK. My prediction variable is charges here, the one that I'm trying to predict. My X range, all my X values will be sex boolean. And remember, the reason I had to rearrange the columns is that the regression data analysis tool pack package uh, requires all of the predictor variables to be contiguous. So I didn't want to have the square root children, then square root, and then age square root. All right, so labels in the first column, confidence level, sure. Output range will be this predicted area here. Oh, wait a minute. Nope. That's my prediction calculator. I want my output to go down here below my existing models. So I'll just put it right here. Click OK. And before I do anything else, I'll call this model 3. And then the predictors will be basically the same thing, except it's the square root of children and age. All right. So what happened to our model? Okay, we've got an R squared of 0.74. So it went down a little bit. So actually...
performing the um, squaring didn't help our model and it hurt it slightly. Let's see what it did with uh, my coefficients. So the coefficients, let's see, square root of age. Okay, so the because I'm taking the square root of age and square root of children, you can see the coefficient goes up quite a bit. more so for age than it did for children. Okay, I can also take a look at my t-stat, my p-values, to see what my likelihood is for each of my variables. Uh, for the most part, um, yeah, this one is not strong, uh, uh, sex boolean. These are, Southwest is uh, not strong at all, it's weak, very weak. Northwest is a little bit beyond our cutoff, but uh, again, we'll probably want to maybe uh, eliminate one factor at a time. So the first one we might take out would be with the highest p-value here is Southwest. And then when we take that out, we recalculate because the p-values for the remaining predictor attributes is going to change and that may make Northwest much more significant now that we only have two remaining uh, regions that we're uh, looking at. So you, it's not a good idea to take all the variables out at once that you think are not significant or that look not significant, have high p-values, but take them out one at a time to see how that affects your model. So even in the case of something like um, sex bullion, that is 0.69, it could reduce to a range that makes it worth investigating further or maybe even keeping in your model. All right, so we can then go from there. Okay, so our R squared is uh, 0.74792, et cetera. So I'll copy that and paste that in my new R squared spot for model three, paste value model three and then I can do what I've done before and um, bring in my coefficient values for model three starting with sex boolean Transpose those values. And then I can uh, do my predicted charges just like I have before, where I do the sum product of, uh, in this case, I'm going to change that up one row. So I'll do it to F4 and M4. And then I want my coefficient or not my coefficient, my intercept to be the intercept for my new model three, which is this guy here, negative 22,041.09. I'll make that an absolute. Okay, now I've got my predicted. I'll copy that down. And you can see my MAE and RMSE scores have updated over here to the right. So I'll bring those in paste them in as values. So MAE, RMSE both went up a little bit. So we like lower MAEs, RMSEs. R squared went down a little bit. So we like model two the best, at least of the three we have so far. We tried de-skewing de kurtosisizing the age in children. Now it could be that maybe we ruined it by trying to de-skew age when we didn't need to. Let's see what those uh, look like after we got done. Was it age that we didn't need to? Yeah, so age was already good. So so that could have been a problem. Maybe, maybe it would have been better if we had just gone with uh, children and left age as it was originally. And you can 
try different combinations of square root, cube root, squaring. If your uh, skewness is to the left, you can square or cube the values. So that takes us through evaluating different models, reviewing the MAE, RMSE, maybe addressing a couple variables that we would uh, like to see if we can fix. We'll get into that a little bit more as we move forward into our modeling tool for this semester and the data prep phase of CRISP-DM and uh, talk about different values for uh, some of the measures and how you know, when we think we need to address them. So anyway, that, that's it for this video. Let's uh, get back to our reading and uh, see what we'd like to do next.